Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Turn-On, Turn-Off Time with MXO Series Oscilloscopes. In this short presentation, we'll explain how to use Rodi & Schwartz MXO Series Oscilloscopes to measure the turn-on and turn-off delay of AC to DC power supplies. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of power supplies and how turn-off and turn-on time are measured. If you're not familiar with these topics, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Turn-Off, Turn-On Time Measurements before beginning this presentation. Let's briefly review Turn-On and Turn-Off Delay. Turn-On Delay is the time between when an AC power supply is switched on and when the DC output voltage reaches some defined level. Turn-Off Delay is the time between when the AC input voltage is turned off and when the output DC voltage level falls to a defined value. The on and off DC levels can be defined in different ways. Typically, for turn on, the measurement is made at the point where the output voltage reaches 90% of the target output level. For turn off, the measurement point may be where the output voltage is still high, it may be where the output voltage is mostly off, or it may be somewhere in between, depending on the application and or requirements. Turn on and turn off delay can be measured with any MXO series oscilloscope. Two channels are required. One of the channels is used to measure the AC input voltage, and the other channel is used to measure the DC output voltage. In addition to properly setting up the vertical and horizontal systems, it's also recommended that the MXO be configured to trigger on the DC waveform. We'll look at this more closely on the next slide. Once the DC voltage transition has been acquired, the delay between this transition and the start or stop of the AC voltage can easily be measured using cursors. It's also important to keep in mind that turn on and turn off delay should be measured with a load attached to the power supply output. This is because the delay will often be load dependent, and this is particularly true in the case of turn off delay. As mentioned before, the first step is to be sure that the vertical scaling and horizontal scaling are set to match the voltage waveforms. In particular, the time base, that is the seconds per division setting, should be chosen so that the start or stop of the AC waveform, as well as the DC voltage transition, are both visible on the screen. Typically, the time base will be in the tens of milliseconds per division. It's also recommended that triggering be done on the DC output voltage, since this will center the interesting event in the middle of the screen. A rising or positive edge should be used for turn-on measurements, and a falling or negative edge should be used for turn-off measurements. The trigger level must also be set appropriately. For turn-on, this is usually 90% of the nominal on DC voltage, Whereas in turn-off measurement, the level may be only slightly less than nominal output, close to zero, or somewhere in between. Don't forget to set trigger mode to normal, so that the MXO triggers when the DC output voltage crosses the trigger threshold level. Here's an example of a turn-on time measurement. A rising edge trigger has been configured on channel 2, the green trace, with the level set to 4.5 volts which is 90% of the nominal on voltage of 5 volts. After AC power is switched on, the MXO will trigger, and the display will be similar to what's shown here. Cursors are then placed at the start of the input AC voltage, the yellow trace, and the trigger point, which is where the DC output voltage exceeded 4.5 volts. The time between these two cursors is 78 milliseconds, and this represents the turn on time. Next, let's look at a turn off time measurement. This time, we configure a falling edge trigger with a trigger level set to the chosen off voltage. In this example, we'll use 4.5 volts again. The MXO triggers when the DC output falls below this level. As before, we use cursors to measure the time between the AC power off and the trigger point, and here we have a turn off time of 154 milliseconds. 
As we already mentioned, the characteristics of the load, that is, how much current it draws from the supply, often has a very significant impact on turn-off delay or hold-up time. In this example, the load is drawing 200 milliamps, and we have a measured turn-off time of 154 milliseconds. However, if we reduce the amount of output current drawn to only 100 milliamps, we measure a turn-off time of 280 milliseconds, almost twice the value in the previous example. It's therefore often a good idea to measure turn-off delay under both normal load conditions as well as under worst-case load conditions. Let's end with a brief summary. Power supply turn-on and turn-off measurements can easily be made with Rodian Schwartz MXO series oscilloscopes. This measurement requires two channels, each with a suitable voltage probe, and a controllable or variable load can also be helpful for testing under both normal and worst-case conditions. The basic measurement procedure is as follows. Probes are connected to both the AC input and DC output sides of the supply, and vertical and horizontal settings are configured appropriately. It's recommended that an edge trigger be used to capture the turn on or turn off event. The power supply is then turned on or off, and cursors are used to measure the time between the AC voltage state change and when the DC output crosses a defined on or off threshold. This concludes our presentation, measuring turn on and turn off time with MXO series oscilloscopes. Thanks for watching.